I am ready for the spirit of God to influence me and my life today. Hallelujah. Can you touch your neighbor and say, I am ready to be changed. I am ready to be impacted. Amen. You know what? Today, we are going to deal with a subject called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is somebody who is highly misunderstood. All right? Holy Spirit is somebody who is highly misunderstood. He is probably the most misunderstood per person or subject that we ever went across. All right? So today, last Friday, I, I have given a little introduction in the Telugu uh, Friday evening service. But today I'm going to just do a recap of that a little and then go into what we are going to deal today. Are you ready? Can I hear an amen? All right. So who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is nobody else, but he is the representative of the kingdom of God. Amen. He is the representative of the kingdom of God on earth. As long as the Holy Spirit is on earth, that means the kingdom of God is existing. Hallelujah. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will never cease. Amen. All right. So the point is this. He is the representative of the king. He is the governor of the kingdom of God. Now, in order for us to understand the Holy Spirit, we need to understand how kingdoms work. That's the reason why I have dealt with the subject of the kingdoms. Now, the reason why I taught about the kingdom is because you can understand who Holy Spirit is. So without understanding the kingdom, you can never understand the governor. Because the role of a governor is crucial in changing or converting the colony into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now who is the colony? Everybody say, I am the colony of God. My body is the colony of God. My mind is the colony of God. I don't know what happened to that. Come on, let's say, my mind is the colony of God. My body is the colony of God. And this is going to be turned into the kingdom of God through the spirit of God. Amen. That is the main role of the Holy Spirit. The main role of the Holy Spirit is to convert the, the colony, the new territory into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, we have all understood how the Viceroy works in India, right? Even though the Queen of England was there in England, the Viceroy was representing the Queen in India. Amen. So as long as we see the Viceroy, we know that the Queen of England was ruling. Now how many of you know why we, were, why we are singing Janagana Mana Adinayaka Jai Hai? Do you know? Do you have any idea? It is because till that time, till the year 1947, we were singing, God save the queen. I am born to serve the queen. Yes, that was the song in India. We were all drink, started drinking tea. But because we need to remove that song, we need to, we declared independence. So we declared independence to that nation, to that system. And we have created our own system. That's when we Im implemented the new songs called Janaganamana or Vande Matra. Now are you able to understand? So the songs exhibit the culture of what we are in. That's the reason why the songs are so important. That's the reason why we make songs even from our church. Every word has a deep meaning inside it. So every song that you sing is actually the meaning, the meaning of the song. You, should, you always need to feel the meaning of the song whenever you sing. Without feeling the meaning of the song, God cannot move inside you. Hallelujah. Now, today, what we are going to do is, we are going to talk about the functioning of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say functioning of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have told you why the Holy Spirit came, right? That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We have dealt on Friday. I, I wish I can find some time so I can also do that in English. Probably I'll do that. Uh, I'll record that message in English and I'll again release it. So it'll be for the benefit of everybody. So functioning of the Holy Spirit. We are going to deal with the functioning of the Holy Spirit. Let's all understand that the Holy Spirit can never go against the king. Why? Because he is sent from the king. Everybody say, Holy Spirit is sent by the king. 
All right. So where do, I, where do we find this? John chapter 16, verse 13. Very simple. It is very easy to understand. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Now listen to this. He will not speak on his own. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. Where does he hear from? He hears from God. Hallelujah. Everybody say, the Holy Spirit hears from God and he conveys that message to us. That is the importance of Holy Spirit. Now, if I'm speaking a foreign language, let's say I'm speaking Tamil. In order for you to understand Tamil, you either need to know Tamil or you need to have a translator. The Holy Spirit is the translator. Hallelujah. Are you able to understand? The Holy Spirit translates what God says. Amen. Now, he will, he will never have his own mind. Most of us, we think that Holy Spirit has his own mind. No, he never has his own mind. Rather, he is, he has the mind of God. Amen. So, whatever he is, God is. Whatever the governor of India was, or the viceroy of India was, the queen of England is. Hallelujah. So, as long as the governor says th something, that means the queen of England is saying it. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit is the most important person. Are you able to understand? On earth. Let me repeat that again so you can understand. The Holy Spirit is the most important person on earth. Without the Holy Spirit, there is nothing. There is no proof that God exists. That is how important Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. Through him, everything was made. Can you believe that? The, 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 the heavens and the earth, they were made by the Holy Spirit. Because in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then God said, let there be light. Hallelujah. Man. So, some of us whom we do not believe in the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you're doomed for life. If you think there is no Spirit of God, I'm telling you, you, you're seizing the works of God. In order for the works of God to be established or to be done, you definitely need the Spirit of God inside you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God he has His own role. The Holy Spirit will only take instructions from God and He will let you know what God wants you to do. Now, without the Holy Spirit, can you know what God wants you to do? There is no chance. There is no chance. He will let you know what the king wants you to do. So, my question to you today is, is the Holy Spirit instructing you? Is the Holy Spirit instructing? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you clearly, the Holy Spirit, he always instructs me. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit always instructs me. That is how I understand the Bible. Without the Holy Spirit, the Bible is, mm -mm. you won't be able to understand. Why? Because the Bible won't be translated to you. That's the reason why the messages that you hear are so different. So different, so unique. Why? Because these are the words of the Holy Spirit. I am not taking these notes from a Catholic Bible study. How many of you know that? 99.99% of the teachings that we listen in the church today are from Catholic-based theology. You don't even have, an, have that idea. That is the reason why we missed the kingdom part. The Bible consists of the kingdom of God everywhere. And you know what? We have missed it. We, all we did was just remove the prayer of Mary. Except that, we are following the theology of Catholic. My dear child, talk to yourself and say this. Accept, say this with your mouth. Today, I accept the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So speak to me, God. Hallelujah. John chapter 16, verse 14, it says, 
He will glorify me. Who? The Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Whatever you receive that is from me, from Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want to talk to Jesus, whose voice are you going to hear? The Holy Spirit voice. The Holy Spirit is as important, for example, as this camera that is right now transmitting my message. Without this camera, there is no transmission. The people outside this perimeter, they cannot see me. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, whatever the king says, that is what the Holy Spirit says. Now, listen to this. Whatever the Holy Spirit says, that's what the king says. Are you able to understand? So, A is equal to B. That means B is equal to A. That is, that is the principle that applies over here. Whatever the Holy Spirit is. So, if God is capable of creating the whole universe, what do you think is the capability of the Holy Spirit? Can you imagine? Jesus came to this earth so you can receive the Holy Spirit again. Hallelujah. Jesus died on the cross so you can receive the Holy Spirit. Can you, can you understand the importance of the Holy Spirit? It took God to come down from heaven so you can receive the Holy Spirit because we lost the Spirit of God. That is exactly what I say. We lost the kingdom of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit is the presence of heaven inside you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the reason why you're still, you, why you still have that vacuum inside your life, uh, the reason why you are still trying to reach out to God uh, in spite of going to church uh, for the past 20, 30 years, uh, in spite of believing in God, is because uh, you are not experiencing the presence of God which is not inside you. If you do not have the presence of God, man, it is just another religious thing that you're doing. Religious things, they are so damn frustrating. Aren't you frustrated with this Christian life that you're living? Aren't you frustrated with this life, all these traditions, all this culture that is man-made? Lack of the spirit rewards you with the lack of knowledge. Lack of spirit rewards you with lack of wisdom. You might read that verse hundred times, but you will still will never be able to understand that verse without the presence of the Holy Spirit inside you. Man, I'm telling you, when you have the Holy Spirit, your health will be fine. Even when you sleep for one or two hours, you'll be super active. Hallelujah. I'm serious about this. Not at all joking. Because the Holy Spirit gives you the power. The Holy Spirit imparts his power. Hallelujah. Just imagine a nuclear power plant inside you. How will you be? In order for you to function in the way that God wants you to function, you definitely need to have the presence of God inside you. That is when you can function and act and behave in the way that God has designed you. Hallelujah. Because without the heart, how can you do it? Without the heart, you can never do it. So lack of spirit, lack of spirit will always make you disagree with the Bible. Why? Because when you have the spirit inside you, you will always agree with what Jesus says. You will always agree with what God says. If you're dis disagreeing with God, that means there is no spirit inside you. So turn to your neighbor and say, don't even go near the person who disagrees with the Bible. Not even a word. Repeat that, come on. Not even the comma. Hallelujah. If somebody that you're meeting disagrees with the word and the principles of the Bible or the theology of the Bible or the understanding of the kingdom of God, I'm telling you, that guy is having a different spirit. No matter. Alcohol is also called a spirit. 
that is the demonizing spirit which enters inside you when you drink it what happens you start talking a different language see whatever spirit influences you you speak that language hallelujah some of us are too much influenced by that tall bottle of whiskey or brandy or whatever vodka or something you have in your cupboard it is sitting right in your cupboard and it is waiting so you can come and consume him my dear child of god if you really want to be redeemed redeemed you need to stop drinking that spirit and you need to start consuming the spirit of god hallelujah my dear friends the holy spirit's main job do you want to know the holy spirit's main job it is to convert earth into heaven everybody say earth to heaven heaven inside me that is how that is the main job of the holy spirit romans chapter 8 verse 26 we see in the same way the spirit helps us in our ha now do you understand this verse better now did this verse make sense to you you have read this probably from your childhood but it never made sense because you never understood the kingdom concept in order for you to understand how the spirit of god works you need to understand the kingdom when you understand the kingdom now this works verse makes sense in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray for man i'm telling you i have been screaming thousands and thousands of times not to pray for your needs but as soon as you go back home what do you pray for but the spirit himself what does the spirit do let's see this but the spirit himself intercedes for us hallelujah through what through wordless groans you need not talk anything all you need to do is let the spirit do his work hallelujah let the spirit do his work that is exactly how jesus christ was praying he was praying a, a different prayer than your prayer he was praying a totally he was living a, a totally different life than what you are living right now my dear church my dear church you are living a totally different life from jesus and you think you are a christian no you are not you are just following that useless traditions that we have built over this period of time verse 27 and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit who searches our hearts god everybody say god searches my heart all right so he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for god's people in accordance with the will of god everybody say will of god oh yeah that is so important in order for you to understand your functioning in order for you to understand how you are made you need to know what is the will of god is that is exactly what even jesus was praying he was praying let your will be done on earth as it is in what are you praying today are you praying for that car or the house or the bungalow or that nice shirt or the suit or a dress or a pretty girl or a pretty boy man i'm telling you just don't pray that say god i want your will to be done in my life hallelujah i want your your will to be done in my body i want your will to be done in my business in my work in my church let your will be done hallelujah that's how you need to start living man you don't follow the world you follow kingdom hallelujah you follow the kingdom of god you follow a different world that is the heaven you follow the heavenly world every time you pray pray that the the will of god is executed amen and you know what go against everything and everybody whoever disagrees with the will of god hallelujah if you can understand that that is going to change your life in order for you to build yourself into the kingdom you got to start rejecting the world and if you can't go against somebody who says hey, you know what there is no god there is no jesus go against him that means stop stop it stop rather you know what don't even argue with them just leave it hallelujah 
Why? Because the word of the Lord says, agree with your adversary. Quickly is what the word says. Quickly. That means don't even hesitate. If he says, there's no God, he says, fine. Okay, brother, take care. Enjoy. Hallelujah. I don't want you. I don't want to spend time with a useless chap over here. Because I'm going to show you one verse. And this is the reason why I'm telling you, reject the world. The Holy Spirit's job is to deliver the gift of heaven so God's will can be executed on earth. Let's all turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now, the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. What does that mean? Uninformed means misunderstood or lack of knowledge. Don't be uninformed. You know, when you were pagans, verse 2, somehow or the other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. What, what happened when you were pagans? You were influenced. Everybody say influenced. Don't be influenced by the wrong people. What did the influence lead to? To worship mute idols. I'm telling you, don't think that mute idols are something which is there in the temple or wherever. It is not only the temple that I'm talking. It is not only the idols that I'm talking. It, is all, it can also be the guitar that you're craving for. It can be the drums that you're craving for. It can be the clothes that you're craving for. It can be the beautiful, perfect life that you're craving for. Tap your neighbor and say, don't crave for the earthly things. Crave for the will of God to be done. Hallelujah. Oh man, I'm telling you, if you can understand this statement, your whole life, your whole mindset will be changed. You will stop slogging those hours uselessly. I mean, let me ask a question for you straight away. Are you working for money or what are you working for? Everybody answers, I work for money because that's how the world functions. But God doesn't function like that. He says, work, but work for influence. Hallelujah. Work for influence. Everybody say influence. You don't slog those hours so you will get enough money. You slog those hours so you can dominate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you understand? The word says you work so you can influence. That's how God created you. So why are you working for the wrong purpose? Turn to your neighbor and say that. Stop working for the wrong purpose. When you work for the wrong purpose, you will end up in the wrong destination. Amen. When you were pagans, somehow or the other, look at that word, somehow or the other. That means he will try one way or the other. He will send a friend, if not a girlfriend, if not a wife, if not a bad friend, if not another somebody who looks like the wife, if not a good friend. And you know what? They will let you walk in the path of unrighteousness. They will let you walk away from the will of God. Are you living with somebody who lets you walk away from the will of God? Or are you living with the people who will make you walk in the will of God? Just question yourself. What kind of friends do you have? Do you have the friends who are leading you into these places which will make you worship the idols? The idols of alcohol, the idols of drugs, the, drug, the idols of lies, the idols of debauchery, the idols of worshipping something which God has not designed you to worship. Are you able to understand today, my dear church? Are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? Are you able to understand what the Holy Spirit is trying to convey to you? Let's look at verse 3. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. Nobody who is influenced by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one says, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can never say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. That means if you are coming to church, if you are accepting that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, that means there is Holy Spirit inside you. 
Definitely there is Holy Spirit inside you. But are you stopping the Holy Spirit over there? Or are you giving him enough chance so he can change you? British was ruling India till the time Indians allowed to be ruled. The Britishers left India when Indians protested against it. They did not allow the Britishers to rule over us. In the same way, the Holy Spirit, even though he resides in you, until and unless you allow him to rule over you, he will not rule over you. Until and unless you allow him to take control over your mind, he will not take control over your mind. Are you able to understand? Hallelujah. My dear church, the reason why our works are not so powerful is because we are not being filled with the, with the Spirit of God. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Now listen to this. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So turn to your neighbor and say, never complain that you never know. Never complain that you can never do it. Hallelujah. Live a life of no excuse. Can you understand that? Why? Because we gather excuses. Hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Amen. We say, Pastor, why didn't you come to church? Pastor, no sleep, pastor, whole night. I don't know what happens. Saturday night only. All the sleep vanishes. No sleep, pastor. Full body aches. Monday you'll be fine. Tuesday you'll be fine. Till Saturday you'll be fine. Saturday night, the devil takes over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth, not at all lying. If you're saying that, the devil takes over you. I mean, sometimes on Saturday night, actually the Holy Spirit never lets me sleep. He's like, you know what, get up. Today, in last night, I mean, today early morning, he woke me up at 2.30. And I was like, what do you want me to do? He said, pray. Then I prayed. I said, mighty father, today when I'm speaking, let people understand what they hear. Let them understand what you are speaking to them. I never complained saying that I have lack of sleep. I'm actually proud saying that I don't sleep much. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you say, I don't sleep much, that's a complimentary. Turn to your neighbor and say, what about you? The same God as is at work. Hey, you might be playing the guitar in the church. No sleep, yes sleep, one hour sleep, half an hour sleep. Do you have God inside you? Then what do you got to do? When you can't sleep, pick up that guitar and worship God in that night. Hallelujah. If you're a teacher, you can't sleep in the night. What do you got to do? Open the Bible. Read and try to understand what the Holy Spirit wants to convey. My dear church, what kind of thinking pattern are you following? Are you following the world? Do you know where we find these excuses? In the office. Why were you late? Traffic, sir. Why were you late? Cold, a little cold. Why were you late? My wife didn't cook. I was waiting. Hey. In the kingdom of God, it is the same God at work even inside you. Hallelujah. That is how important the Holy Spirit is. So now answer me. If you are unable to get up early in the morning, what does that mean? There is no spirit inside you. Or 
that spirit the holy spirit is being dominated by another spirit you are suppressing the holy spirit that's what the bible says do not suppress the holy spirit we think suppressing the holy spirit means controlling ourselves not talking in tongues no suppressing the holy spirit means you are actually letting another influential behavior take over that you know what the holy spirit actually corrects your behavior if you have the holy spirit inside you your behavior will be perfect why because he will make sure that you are perfect in god amen now let us see why we are given the gifts of the holy spirit in verse 7 now to each one the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good why is the gift given for the what is common good mean we hear common wealth have you ever heard it common wealth what is common wealth common wealth countries what is common wealth countries all the kingdoms that were previously ruled by the great britain they formed as commonwealth countries so the england even now it repays those countries which it ruled it's called commonwealth now common good you will be able to understand now the kingdom of god why are the gifts given so the kingdom of god can influence you amen so the kingdom of god can make a difference through you so listen to this church the holy spirit he gives the gifts to whomever he pleases so if you ask why did that sister get that gift i mean it's the holy spirit who gave it who are you to question some people don't like me they question how did he become a pastor the holy spirit did it who are you to question hallelujah my dear church never question what the holy spirit gives because if you are questioning the holy spirit that means you are questioning god himself that's the reason why jesus he says you know you can accuse me but never accuse the holy spirit why because he represents the kingdom the throne itself the throne itself hallelujah whatever the governor recommends the king accepts are you happy that the governor wants to recommend you based on your behavior listen to this carefully the holy spirit will recommend you only based on your behavior based on your mind based on what you do because the word of the lord is clear jesus says by your fruits you will be recognized now you can simply say i am a follower of christ i believe in jesus but your fruits showcase the world how do you think the holy spirit is going to recommend you manifestation the word manifestation means becoming whole becoming what it was designed to be becoming what it was created to be hallelujah that is the reason why some of you who you think that you can get away from living a private life you are still caught up by the holy spirit some of you you do the private sins that's the reason why you're not blessed publicly because the word of the lord says whatever you do privately i'm going to bless it publicly my dear church whatever you're doing privately the holy spirit is observing you so can't get away from god you can act holy in the church you can act holy even in front of your wife but when your wife is not there or when your husband is not there or probably when your wife or your husband or somebody is not watching you all these desires they creep up the holy spirit is still watching you the holy spirit is still watching you there's the reason why in john 16 verse 8 we see when he comes 
he will prove the world to be in wrong about this about sin and righteousness and judgment he is the one who convicts us he says you are doing wrong but you know what when you suppress the holy spirit you have no right and no wrong that's the reason why the world the ungodly people they don't know the difference between right and wrong my dear church lastly and finally i want to say the gifts by the holy spirit are for government's service everybody say government service when you are given something by the government when you are given a car when you are working for the government you will be given a car when you are when you get a car from the government will you take that car for a picnic no will you will you go and utilize whatever authority that you have for your private benefit no when you are a government servant you work for the benefit of the government I mean last night my wife and i we were watching a a car documentary it was a mercedes benz maybach gls 600 i mean that car was like around 4 crores so um, my wife my wife said you know we need to just imagine yourself preparing a message while driving in that car i'm like wow that's a beautiful thought this is exactly what i replied her back i said if that comes in the way then definitely i will take it but i won't desire for that that means i won't work for that but if it comes in the way of my work then definitely i'll accept it because then it is given by god how many of you are working for your house how many of you are working for your families stop working for that that's the reason why jesus says don't cry for me don't worry about me my dear church what are you working for today who's administering you today you know what domain is called domain in computer language it is a series of computers that can be controlled by using one common set of rules what set of rules are dominating you today are you in the domain of the kingdom of god man this is so powerful i want to close this with this verse first corinthians chapter 14 verse 12 so it is with you since you are eager to have spiritual gifts try to excel in gifts that build up the everybody say what the build up the church church that means the church how many of you think this is the church no the church the word church over here is ecclesia that means the government of god hallelujah what are you what are you using your gifts for what are you using your gifts for What are you working for? Can you imagine yourself? You have lived a life of 80 years. You have worked all those 80 years. You have worked and you have died. After you go to heaven or in the judgment heaven. God says, "What did you work for?" I said I worked in this company all my life. Did you develop your gifts? he will ask the same question that he asked when he gave the talents to the three people some if you think i do not have any talents that is wrong it is the same god that is inside me who is inside you if he has given me talents he definitely will give you talents hallelujah i want to show you one verse and i want to close this i want to show you who the holy spirit is okay what god thinks of the holy spirit ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 and you were also included in christ when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation now listen to this having believed you were marked with him in with a seal 
the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. He is a deposit by the government. Hallelujah. He is a deposit by the kingdom of God. Can you believe that? Oh man. The Holy Spirit is a deposit inside you. You know what a deposit is? Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance? He is a deposit for our inheritance. A deposit is in advance. It is not something you pay after, beforehand. Holy Spirit is the advance beforehand. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is the kingdom of heaven inside you right now. That's who the Holy Spirit is. Now listen to this. Guaranteeing our inheritance. What does he guarantee? What does God guarantee? An inheritance of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Man, what is your inheritance? What is your inheritance? Don't think your inheritance is the property that you get from your grandfather. Your inheritance is the property that you get from the real father. Hallelujah. Hey, are you able to understand? That is your inheritance. Your inheritance. Man, I, I'm telling you, probably I'm going, going to get, I'm going to become a ruler of earth. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to rule India in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Can you believe that? For yourself now. Why? Because God says, Holy Spirit is inside you. So I am guaranteeing you the inheritance. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Until the redemption. Until you get back to the place that you belong to. Amen. Until you get back to the place that, that you belong to. Of those who are God's position to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Man. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee that there is a king. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee that there is the government of God. My wife once told me when she started uh, newly coming to the church, she said, Christy, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, tongues started to come out of my mouth without any effort. I said, that is the guarantee of the Holy Spirit. Some of you think you'll get tongues when you try to speak. No. When you do not know what to speak, when you are so overwhelmed, tongues automatically take over you. Hallelujah. Tongues is the evidence that Holy Spirit is inside you. Are you able to understand? You were marked in God with a deposit. Are you carrying that deposit today? Hallelujah. Are you carrying a deposit in your life? Are you carrying a deposit in your mind? Are you carrying the deposit in your heart today? Is the deposit inside your house? The Holy Spirit is, is enough for you to change from a colony to a kingdom. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in, enough so your, the colony is changed to the kingdom. My dear friends, do you want to become the kingdom of God? Or do you want to stay as a colony? Don't stay as a colony. Because when the Holy Spirit, the governor is inside you, he's going to change you into the kingdom himself. You will be a walking kingdom on earth. Amen. The kingdom means the system. The system, the functioning, the mind. Hallelujah. Country means the land. Nation means the system. That is what kingdom also means. Kingdom means the system. How are you functioning today? How are you functioning today? The Holy Spirit is enough. So you can change from a colony to a kingdom. If you're ready to accept the Holy Spirit inside you. If you haven't really experienced the Holy Spirit, today is the day for you to experience the Holy Spirit because all you need to do is accept Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior and say, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. That's it. 
when you accept when you accept you know jesus says i really found this very interesting i first of all didn't understand this he says it is good for me to for me to go away it is good for you so i go away because if i go away i am going to send you the holy spirit why because when the king is present the governor cannot be present the governor cannot be present that's why when jesus was on earth we did not see the acts of the spirit of god anywhere on earth my dear church but now jesus christ left the earth so you can be the kingdom of god how through experiencing the spirit of god hallelujah are you ready to experience the spirit of god inside your life just think about this just examine this inside your mind and as we close the sermon i want you to invite holy spirit inside you to overtake you to influence you to influence your mind so you can turn from a barren territory from a normal territory into a territory of the kingdom of god let's close our eyes so many father we thank you we thank you for talking to us we thank you for letting us understand that the holy spirit intercedes for us the holy spirit does his work when we let him to do it oh my dear father enable us so that we release the holy spirit inside us so he can actively take over us he can actively take over us oh my dear father let our life be a life of change a life of renewed presence of the holy spirit let us have the hunger and the thirst to listen to the holy spirit in jesus name we ask and pray amen amen